guys how are ya tonight's gonna be a fun fun project night I'm kind of excited to get started I am wearing an apron tonight because it's gonna be a messy project we have our gloves and some of our products we're gonna need here so I'm just waiting for my laptop to get booted up so I can interact with you guys and answer all your questions but tonight we're going to be using, um, well, we're not gonna be using this transfer tonight. We're gonna be using the canvas, but this is gonna be the transfer that we're working to create a background for. So this one is mightier than the waves of the sea. His love is his love for you. And the little waves at the bottom kind of inspires me give us kind of a beachy sea, uh, sea type look. So let's set this aside. And I've got a few things kind of laid out here. I wanted to pull you in closer, but you can't see everything. So let me see if I can push the camera back a little bit so you can get a better view. Let me see if I can do this while I can still see you guys of the whole space. That's a little bit better. You can see a little bit of what's going on there. Okay, so tonight we're doing a pour paint. And um, show me a quick uh, show of hands. How many people have done a pour paint before or know what a pour paint is? Um, Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down in comments. This is so much fun to do. I'm telling you, once you see this tonight, you're gonna wanna do this. And it's really addictive because you can do them up so quickly that you want to do them over and over and over again. So you will end up with a stack of canvases or boards or whatever you're using full of um, the design, different designs. So what we use and I'll mix them up as we go along. We're gonna use a canvas here. This one I, um, I used previously. I just did a quick little once over with the chalk paint to um, clean it up. And um, okay guys, we're having no luck sharing at home. So if you guys can share to other groups, I'd really appreciate it. Hmm? I'm online because I can see people are watching me. Give me a thumbs up, guys, if you can see me. We're live. Yeah, I got a thumbs up, so we're online. So go out of the program and go back in, and you'll probably be able to see it. Okay, so anyway, this was a canvas. It's an 18 by 24 canvas that um, I previously used. Um, it's a black canvas, but I just gave it a quick sanding so I didn't see any letters on it and I also gave it just a quick paint over with some white chalk paint just to get a nice clean base. And then I'm using just various types of, this is just an acrylic craft paint. No big deal, pick the colors you like, you're good to go. The One of the important um, ingredients is this uh, Floetrol, this Flood. And what this is, is a bonding medium. So you're gonna mix paint and your Floetrol um, and a little bit of water. And the Floetrol is going to give, keep your paint and um, your water kind of mixed together so you don't get separation. And it'll give you a really good finished product. So basically people will use this just so you don't have roller marks, so you have a nice smooth finish and so on. But this actually helps with the movement of the paint and it gives you a nice flow of paint so this is quite this is quite important um, as far as where I can find this I haven't seen it at any of our big box stores so I always order mine from Amazon so um, you can get them in different sizes this size is pretty good this is 946 mils it goes a fair fair distance so your recipe that's the important thing for mixing your paint. So let me set my canvas down and grab my cup so hiding over here. 
and let's mix up some more colors. I don't know if you can see them here. I have some different blues because I said we're going to do a C-type um, motif. We'll try anyway. They come out different every single time, so we're never quite sure what we're going to end up with. I've got some browns, different shades of brown for the sand effect, and then I'm going to mix up several different types of blues. I've got three here for our water, and I want that to blend up into our sky a little. We're going to use a lot of white. So just use a cup. You can actually, these ones are a little bit bigger. I would normally, I don't know if you can see the size there. I would normally use a Dixie cup or a smaller cup. I think these are, I think they're eight fluid ounces. I'm doing all my shopping on Amazon because of this current situation. I can't see how many fluid ounces. They're a little bit big, but they're okay. They're going to work. So, oh, this one's still still sealed. Okay, you don't see me doing this. My mother would kill me after years of braces. <laughs> I still can't get it. Well, when I don't actually go for... Oh, there we go. I do have it. There. Okay, so as far as our mixing goes, we're going to go about equal parts. It doesn't matter how much you have. You're going to kind of play with your consistency. So put a bit in the bottom of the cup there. This one's kind of pretty. It has a little bit of a metallic finish to it. And then we're going to take our flood and we're going to put about the same amount in there. I'm going to do a couple, so I'm going to leave the cap off that one. And then all I have is a coffee, um, wooden coffee stick. Use anything to stir it up. Mix them together. And I'll just show you the consistency you have there. It's kind of goopy, right? Still pretty thick. What we want to see is that to give a nice stream, a nice flow. Just going to add a little bit of water. The water you just want to add just a little bit at a time till you find your consistency that you want. So when I hold that up, I want it to stream off there. It's still a little bit goopy. It's not streaming yet. Almost. We're close. And if you go a little too far with your water, just add a little more paint and the flood back in. Okay, so let's see. Mm, we're not too, too bad there. I'm gonna add just a little more water. I just want this to flow just a little bit better. That's not too bad. It's looking like I'll get too thin if I go any further. So the next part is the secret ingredient. This is the best, best part. So this is just silicone oil. Again, ordered it online. And just add a couple of drops into it. And this is going to create cells. Um, and you're going to see that after. That's when the magic all happens. That is really, really cool. When we get to that stage, I'm going to pull the camera in further so you guys can see a little um, more closely what goes on because it is really, really pretty cool. Okay, so that's not too bad there. How about we do one more color of this lighter blue? We've got a pretty big canvas, so we need a fair bit of paint to go a good distance here. And again, I don't measure anything. Some people do. I just kind of eyeball to half and half. So we're going to do our big one first. I don't know if you caught it. I'm doing, I'm, this is the part one of a two part project. So tonight we're going to do our pour paint. We're going to create a canvas, which is going to be our background for our chalking project tomorrow night. And the verse on our project for tomorrow night has reference to a sea and 
um, that type of thing. So I thought we would kind of go water, a little, maybe a little bit of beach at the bottom, sky, kind of, you know, a little bit of mo movement. That's why I thought of, of pour painting because you can kind of create that and create movement. I'm telling you guys, you will be addicted to this. You need a big space to work with because once you get going, and it is a fair bit to kind of set up to get going. So once you have everything all laid out and all your paints out and everything else, you can do a project fairly quickly and then you have to lay it out to dry. You should lay it out probably overnight to dry because you've got fairly thick paint. And um, oh, that needs a little more water, I'd say. Almost there. And so it doesn't take too, too long to do a project. So then you're going to do um, a project after a project after a project after a project. And then you're going to run out of surface space or counter space to actually lay it out to dry. <coughs> so um, I'm telling you, it's addictive. A couple of drops of our silicone oil. Now, um, I was really stirred up, but rule on the block is if you stir it less once you put your silicone oil in, you're going to get bigger cells. Um, I kind of like the small ones, so I just kind of give it a stir up. Then let it sit, and if they kind of clump together and make bigger cells, then we're okay. All right, so you guys ready for the fun and the magic? Let's get started. And then after this one, um, this one will be for our project tomorrow night. Then I am going to do a smaller one and I'm going to show you my absolutely favorite style of um, pour painting. It's so much fun and like I said, you never know what these are going to turn out like. Each one is a bit of a surprise. So I'm going to move these out of the way because our canvas is a little bit bigger. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to catch all your comments up there. Probably help if I put my glasses on. So I'm just going to step to the side here. My laptop had to reboot and I didn't want to leave you guys hanging for our seven o'clock start. So I had to restart it. Let it do its thing there. Put these back here. And we'll get our canvas back up. Probably shouldn't be wearing white, but I did put an apron on. All right. Let's see if we can get booted up here. So there's all different types of pour painting. We're going to do kind of, kind of a hot mess tonight, but we're going to place our paint in the zones that we want to um, create the color. Like I said, I want a little bit of sky. I want some water. And then I probably have more water and just a little bit of brown, a little bit of beach at the bottom. And actually, so you guys can see better. I think I'm going to go sideways. So think of this as the sky, this is the beach. And I'm gonna bring you guys in a little bit closer so you can see. And I just about have us here. So let me see what I can do to bring you fella, you fellas, you, you gals, sorry, in a little bit more. And I'm going to tilt you down a little bit more. How's that? I think you can see everything. If I get too close, it's going to be too big and you won't see the edges. Okay. We should be right there. Get our gloves on. There we are. All 
right. I can see you guys. So like I said, this is messy. I normally work on smaller ones and then I have a tin foil. I usually have a, like a cookie sheet, tin foil cookie sheet type thing underneath it and it can catch all the excess paint. But this is a little bit bigger than what I have. So we're gonna make do. It's gonna get messy. Let's get rid of my glasses here. All right, so we're gonna start with a little bit of paint. We're just using some white here. I'm gonna put a bit of paint white through the center because that's where I'm gonna want. I'm gonna want my water a little bit. Yeah. Should have put that. I wanted maybe put move that a little bit further down. Okay. I've got a my mat under here, which is making an uneven, uneven surface. So let me just put a little bit of the brown here. And like I said, this is going to flow. So we're going to mix all this together so it flows. down in this. It'll be a little abstract. I put a little white in my corners just to help my flow off the canvas. So this is going to flow right over off the edges. It's going to be a nasty mess. There you go. It's already started. Now let's start getting some of this blue some of this blue going. And really, you make it up as you go along. You don't uh, I try and get a bit of a gradient of my color, my blue, up into the sky and what have you. A little bit of the darker blue is going to go into the deeper water. And I don't want it too, too dark because I want my lettering to show up. Use this blue. Which one haven't I used? I don't think I used this one yet. I want some of this blue up in my sky. Use a bit better stick for this. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free, ask away. I'll try and keep an eye on my screens over here. There's a little pop up there. Gloves don't uh, give you a censored finger, do they? There we go. And I was thinking a smidge of this mauve. Just to give it a little bit of a, just a little bit of a variance to the sky, just a smidge. This will, this will move, and a little bit of the yellow. Not much of this at all.
Huh? Can't even get it out. Okay. Now let's give this guy some white. And I'm going to pour some in the corners. This gives us our movement off the side. Okay, you guys ready to create? So the whole design is going to be, I'm going to add a little bit of white into here. The whole design is going to be created with our tilt, with us tilting our canvas. I'm dripping already. All right. So just a little bit more down here for movement. I'm going to add some more brown. This isn't like chalk paste because this doesn't uh, dry very quickly. All right. So I'm my movement going at the edges here. You can almost see in this corner, can you see this? The cell's starting to create here. Can you see that there? You know what? For this part, I'm gonna bring you guys right over top. One glove off here. So you can see here, the cell's starting to form. Now let's start tilting. Now you just want to just start it moving. You don't want, the more movement you create, the bigger your design is going to be. I'm just going to get this moving here a little bit. This is where the fun kind of happens. You just kind of just get your paint all over your canvas. And you see it's starting to move towards the edge here. my yellow. I don't want that big a yellow in here. I want that to blend a little more and I want this to blend a little more. I'm going to take my water down a little bit lower. I didn't want my sand to be too thin too far up my canvas, as you can remember. We should almost have uh, ambient music going as we watch this. to this corner. I think I might just add, this is a little bit dark for me, dark for the look I want, so I'm going to add just a little bit of the white into that.
and you can also take your stick. There's no, there's no rules to any of this. And just kind of give it a little bit of movement. And actually I want this to fill in here a little bit. I probably could have used a little more paint on the canvas. It's doing okay. And let's get her want her going up in that way a little bit. A little more paint, a little more thickness. I would have it would have flowed just a little more quickly. dry edge so it will flow off. And this is actually quite good because you actually don't have to frame this. You can you can actually once you have it flowing off the edge your pattern will continue right through over your edge. And once I set it off to dry it's actually still going to um, continue to flow off the edges and drip. So your pattern will be right to the edges. So this should work well with the transfer that I have in mind for tomorrow. I want a little more white in the sky. We're getting awfully blue, but Flowing off that corner. Can you guys see it there? Um, I do have this blow dryer nearby, Crystal. I'm just going to actually very shortly start. I've got my torch gun here, and I'm going to start. Sorry, I'm hiding it from you guys here. I'm going to start um, getting my cells going. And again, I'm just going to take my stick. I just want to break this up because I want to, I want my lettering um, not to be, I don't want the background to be too, too dark. I was thinking black chalk paint for, for this part. And I want it just a little I don't want quite that dark. I was thinking a little more muted. But like I said, you never quite know how this is going to turn out. Just let it run off this edge a little bit. little more mixed. There, now I'll let that flow a little. Get our beach back down at the bottom. Our beach is coming up a little.
That's looking nice down that side. It's flowing nicely. back into the center a little bit. Looks like our sky is falling. I want those darker blues not to be quite as prominent. This is kind of neat in here. It looks like waves washing up onto the beach. Some water coming up. Looks like the ocean. Yeah, Crystal, that's, uh, that's what we're going with. I'm going to be doing the, I can't tell you the name of it right now. Um, the transfer that references the sea. It's completely slipped to my mind off the top of my head here. Okay, now I'm just going to add a little white into my sky. Get this a little more wispy. That is a little more distinctiveness between the two. And then we'll probably leave it alone. I'll pull out my, my torch and you'll see the cells come. That's the best part, I think. Looks like an angry sea. Not one you're going to go out on your little floaty and enjoy. Just get that up to this top a little. Okay, and let's bring our water down. Bring our sky down a little. I need to mix some more white for our next one, I think. There we go. We'll bring that sky down. So is anybody hooked? Anybody want to try this? What kind of paint is this? This is just an acrylic, a craft acrylic paint. And as soon as I get my dirty gloves off, I'll show you. You're adding a paint additive to it. It's actually a bonding agent. It's called Floetrol or Flood. And it binds your paint with you thin it out with a little bit of water and it really binds everything together and get, allows you to have this movement. It's really quite, uh, it's really quite cool. And you can see some of the cells starting to form here, but watch once I, I'm gonna get my sky coming down from the side a little bit because it looks like our waves are really high here. The transfer I'm going to use is actually a little more serene than this water looks. You guys will have to join me tomorrow night and see the finished product. Okay. So we'll let that sit like that. I'll get my gloves off here. Are you coming back tomorrow night, Lise? See the finished product? It's gonna be great. What a mess. What a mess. I'm gonna have to get another set of gloves for my next one. So then to bring the cells out, you wanna to torch it. Um, and this is just a, is it a flambe torch or something you'd use for creme brulee? A butane torch. And can you guys see well enough? 
watch as I heat it. That silicone oil that we put in earlier is really good. The cells are going to start popping. And they're just like little, the, the paint just kind of separates and you just get the little colors, color variances. It's almost like magic. I love this part. Actually, it looks like that needs to flow a little more right there. I think I had enough paint in that one spot. Hey Deb, how you doing? Oh good, Lise, I'll look for you tomorrow night. It's kind of fun doing these bigger projects, two-part projects. You don't want to hold your flame in one spot too long because it will, um, it will torch it, it will burn it. I'm guessing cells happening right underneath the camera there so you guys can see. You don't have to add the silicone oil to it. You will still get the movement and the color variation and so on. The silicone oil just gives you a really neat effect. You can see all these colors in here where um, you're almost getting a um, more of a marbly look to it and little circles with darker colors around it and so on. Some of them really, really, the cells really pop out. Others it just takes a little bit of time but even if I didn't torch it the cells would eventually come out as it dries so this is going to evolve as it dries add a little bit of white right here just to give that a little, a little more thickness to it Continue to flow there. I'm going to be covered in paint. Oh well. Let's get that down. Get a little movement on that part there. All right. Can you see them starting to come here? I love doing this, but it's something that you set up when you do a few in a day because it really does make kind of a mess and you don't want to pull it out and put it away every day, especially if you're working on a kitchen counter or... All right, so what do you think? We'll leave it at that. Maybe we'll let the water come down a little bit more. I'm going to let it flow down into this corner a little bit. See if I can grab it here. I want this corner here, I want my water to come down and flow off a little bit more. Paint's starting to settle a little bit, so it's... Okay. Okay. I think I'll leave it at that. And this one I'll be bringing back tomorrow night to chalk on. So you'll see the finished product tomorrow night. I'm going to set this off to the side. And then I'm going to do another one. And I'm going to show you my absolute favorite pour painting. Oh, now they're really starting to pop. Look at them go. All right. Set that off to the side. I'm just going to step off camera here and take this away. And I've got a little setup over here for them to dry.
isn't that a nice mess? I'm going to tilt you guys back up a little bit so I can see you. And we're going to get ready for our next one. I think I'm going to grab another piece of paper and just lay it over top of this. So it's not, uh, so we've got a clean surface again. better much better and look at that paint even sticks it right down perfect all right so we'll do a smaller one how about I believe this is an 8 by 10 canvas I'm going to sit down, take a load off, see what you guys are up to. Hey, Deb. How are you doing? It's Thursday, guys. Almost the weekend again. But I guess, well, I'm finding that the weeks flow into one another now, don't they? Okay, so we need to mix up some more paint here. So let's pick the colors we're going to use on this one. And I'm going to do some dark green. Oh, I need my pink. Look at all those colors. We don't need too, too much for this one. We will need a lot of white though. Okay. So our cups. I need more white, so I'll work in this this cup again. I'll set that off to the side. So, if you weren't with us when we first started, we're going to mix some of the paint. So this is really, this is just an acrylic paint. Um, this is from one of our big discount box stores. I don't really look at any brands or anything when I buy it. I need lots of this. So here's our paint. This is what I was talking about earlier. So this is uh, Floatrol. It's a bonding medium because I'm going to thin my paint out. You don't want your paint and your water um, to separate. And this also gives the paint more movement. So you're going to mix your paint. I'm going to leave that open because I'm going to use it again and your Floatrol 50-50. Um, so let me just mix that and see what I end up with. Okay, so you can see how it's really kind of, has a little bit of movement, but it's still kind of goopy, clumpy. So now I'm just adding regular old water and just add uh, just a little bit at a time because you don't want to get it too thin. If you get it too thin, you're going to um, have to thicken it up again because then it's just going to run everywhere. But you want it to be at least a consistency that as you lift your stick out, it's running off your stick. You get a stream almost there. That, that I like, that's good. And a little secret ingredient, a little bit of silicone. A few drops of silicone, you don't need a lot. And stir that up, like I said. If I just did a quick little stir, mixed it in, I'm gonna get bigger cells because the oil is gonna stay bonded. Um, I like smaller cells, so I give it a good mix in. So I've got lots of white. We're going to create an illusion of flowers, like a flower garden. So I'm going to use a little bit of the pink, a little bit of Floatrol. And I don't need a lot of my accent colors. My white is kind of my main one. I'm just get 
that mixed in. You guys can chat with me. So how is everybody doing? How is everybody handling it? Does everybody have family home, like extended family, kids home from university, and a house full again, or are things pretty quiet? We're not too, too bad. We have our son home with us, so there's just the three of us. We have five kids. Um, we're a blended family, so I have two, my husband has three. They're all adults now, aging 27 down to 21. And um, yeah, so they're all pretty much hunkered down where they're at, except we have one with us um, for the time being. And that's okay, that's good. And I kind of like to make sure everybody is safe and sound and home and um, following the rules, staying home and staying safe. Okay, that one's still a little bit. I think I want that just a little, a little thinner. Okay. I don't think I want to go too much thinner than that. Add a smidge more. So what color flowers do we want? I have mauve, I have yellow, I have the pink now. So let me show you the colors they're hiding back here. So we have some yellow, we have some nice fuchsia pink, we have the mauve color. Um, how about an, some orange flowers? We'll get some nice brightness. Then we'll add a little bit of green because our garden has to have some foliage in it. of that. Let's see how that works. So we'll do our orange and then we'll do a green and then we'll create and it will be fantastic. This is actually a very pretty orange. I might have added too much there but I was getting tired of adding a little bit and a little bit so I went I went for it. Actually I'm not too too bad there. I don't know why it's just dripping. It might be my stick, because it seems pretty thin. Did I add did I add the oil to the pink? Did you guys see me do that? Oh purple? I think I do have some deep purple. I'll have to go to my tickle trunk of paint colors over here. Did I add the oil to the pink? I think so, eh? Okay, and a green, and then I'm going to check on our pink. Did it again. Maybe I should start measuring. It doesn't seem to really cause too many issues if you if you're a little out of proportion there. And I will go check on a purple for Tammy. We have our nice mold, but let me see what I have purpley wise. That's not too bad. I have my oil before I leave, so I don't forget. Right. My colors right over here. Let's see what I have for purple. Actually, that would look very pretty with the pink because I'll show you another neat technique as well. I'm mixing the colors. We'll do it a couple of different ways. We don't need a lot of the 
these ones. Let's see if I go crazy. That one wasn't too bad that time. I'm done with that. This is a pretty deep purple. Okay. You guys are quiet tonight. You've got to chat with me. Let me know. Where are you all from? Let's start with that. Where is everybody watching from? Are you local? Are you Canada? Are you you're the US? Are you in a warm state? Are you in a cold state? Did you get snow yesterday like we did? Let me know what you, what's going on with you. Okay, the oil is in. Let me get rid of these colors out of our way. some of these other colors too if you want to add some blues in. Okay, so we're working with our canvas. Let's work with it horizontally. Let's see if I can do this without getting paint on my sweater. And I think I'm going to grab a new set of gloves so I don't have to fight with those ones. Those will be awfully messy to try and get back under my hands after that other white paint pour. All right. Are you ready, Freddy? So, we're going to create a effect of a garden with, if you can imagine, um, gladiolas back at the top, beautiful little flowers, maybe some impatience down in the front, lots of beautiful colors, the perfect garden. This would be my perfect garden, kind of. Well, we'll see how it turns out and then I'll say that. So, let's start with a little yellow. So we're gonna have some yellow flowers. Okay, now how about we mix in some pretty pink flowers with this. And you can do whatever you want. There's no rhyme or reason. As you play around with this and you do a little bit more, you'll come up with all kinds of really cool ideas. There's actually a really neat one that you can actually create um, I guess they're almost like a gladiola where you use a string or you use a chain um, and you actually put the paint onto your um, string or chain and then you pull it down. You kind of twist it around back and forth and then you pull it down. <coughs> Sorry. I could feel that sneaking up on me. Okay, now let's get some orange in there. Maybe we'll just dab the, oh, there we go, we dabbed it, didn't we? So the other technique that I was gonna show you, I'll just get a couple of these down and then I'll, it kind of gives a really cool effect. How many orange flowers do you want? A little bit or a lot? One over here, maybe. We won't get it too, too heavy with orange. Okay. So the neat effect that you can do is you can actually um, layer them. So in the middle of your orange one here, you could add a little 
oops, a little yellow. And it's going to give you a bit of a different effect. We're going to put a little yellow in our pink one. Give them a little more than I want. Maybe I'll do it that way. But it doesn't matter. It's going to look good. I wanted to put a few of those types of flowers here. I'll put one over here. Then in some purple in and all your colors are okay if they flow together if you want to see more of one color than another color just add a little more of that a little less of the other Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of the purple. I don't want too, too much of it because it's a pretty dark color. So we'll just get a little bit here and there for it to come up through. This is almost like a navy bluey purple. It did say purple on the bot jar, I promise. Oops, a little bit much there. You like the per like the orange, yeah. The orange is really uh, the orange is really gonna pop. And then I'm gonna add some green in, and that's gonna be our nice. Um, that's probably enough of that. So let me add a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of pink into the center of these purple flowers. pink into this yellow here. There's other forms of pour painting where you can put everything into a cup. Um, it takes a little bit more to know like um, the white is a denser paint so it's always going to sink to the bottom so you're going to um, have to just you know put your um, colors in a certain order so there's a little bit more to that but you can actually layer your colors into your cup, dump your cup upside down, and then kind of swirl it around, lift it, and then your paint just starts flowing. And that's another whole different effect that's kind of cool. So that we'll add our greenery in. So this is gonna pull some of our foliage up. a little on me didn't I okay are you guys ready to see what this is gonna look like and again I tell you every time you do it it's gonna look a little different and sometimes it's not gonna look at all like you expected it to but it will still be great all right So do any of you chalk, well I know a couple of you do, does anybody um, chalk with Chalk Couture? Are you familiar with the product? Because that's what we're going to be doing tomorrow night to um, the first piece that we did tonight. Alright guys, who's ready for this? So again, this is my favorite kind to do. Just get my paint out of the way because I think I'm going to end up wearing some of this. Again, I usually work with a, a tray underneath and I've got a little wire basket that everything sits on, but I'm not quite set up the way I normally, normally would be. Let's get the water out of the way or I will make a mess. So this technique requires a paper towel and we're going to wet the paper towel. Actually, I do need that. Mm. 
because this is going to be a drag technique. Okay, so we just need one end of it to be nice and wet. water on that. That will be okay. So we'll get our paper towel ready to go. We're going to open it up and you want it to be the width of your um, project that you're working on. So I think we're pretty good there. You can do it um, without being the width. I think we're pretty good. All right. So I'm going to add a little bit of my white just down at the bottom here just to get it flowing a little bit off my edge. Then, actually, you know what, I'm going to add a little bit of color up here. I have a couple of tall ones. I know, I'm killing you with suspense, aren't I? I have a couple up here. So if you're just tuning in, we're making potentially a beautiful garden. So we'll see how it turns out. Ooh. A little bit of pink there. And I think we'll put a little bit of our purple up here too. We want some, some taller flowers at the back. That will do. All right, now we're ready. Okay, so we're gonna pour white across the top. And we want enough to work with here. I'm just going to make sure that that gets off the top of my canvas because we want it to flow over. And here's where your towel comes in. Now this is going to be messy, guys, I'm telling you. I'm going to work with my side. This tore a little bit there. I'm going to work with from this side. So all you do is lay your paper towel down into your white and we're going to drag it down. Nice and flat there. Helps if you work with a bigger piece of paper towel that isn't one of those half pieces. All right. I'm gonna move that out a little. It's wanting to pucker there. didn't pull here so I'm just going to lay that and you can see the cells already starting to create there. Why are you doing this I'm just doing a live, huh? What's up? Alright, and let's do the same thing on this one. We'll grab the edge. What do you guys think? Now, if we wanted, if you wanted to subdue this, we could add more at the top and pull it down a little bit more. I'm just going to get that to flow down a little bit over the edge. See the cells starting? Isn't that cool? I don't want it to flow too fast on me. here. So when you dry them, I'm going to want to set them up onto cups so they can continue to drip off while they finish up there. Just get these edges. Where's my white? I just want to make 
make sure that that flows right down the edge there. And now let's use our, our heat gun and create more cells. You can take your flowers like right to the top if you wanted. You can do whatever you want. I think this creates a really neat effect. And watch once the cells start going coming through, the colors will really start to come through. So again, we're just using um, a butane torch. Can you guys see it well enough there to see the cells start to form? So this is where all the different colors will mix now. see it starting to happen there. I think I might flow it back a little bit up into the white, take it a little bit higher. So my colors will get up into the white there. are moving on me. I'm just going to take my stick and pull these up a little bit. it a little bit more. It's kind of neat, eh? It's kind of cool. Like I said, everyone turns out a little bit differently. I've done some, I did a really cool one actually, where I put a, I used my Cricut and cut a running horse out and had part of my horse's body and then did a swipe sideways and off the end of his body and his tail and that almost looked like um, an effect of kind of the horse running quickly. You had that swoosh off the back of it, but it was in browns and, um, and golds and it really turned out well. And one I did where I took the cutout from where the horse was and uh, I put that onto my surface and that created a really really cool effect. But you can do just about anything and use any color you want. And so now you're seeing the cells starting to come out. See all these little colors? Can you see them there? Where the yellow's popping through the pink and that's what the heat does. It kind of like I said earlier, most of the cells would come out, but the heat encourages them to pop. I think they kind of end up looking, these taller ones, uh, as the cells pop in that, they kind of end up looking like gladiolus. Little pops of color. cells coming in here Oops. and like I said don't stay in one spot too too long because you'll end up with uh, you'll end up torching it so anyway tomorrow night I'll take my camera off in just a minute and I'll walk over and we'll take a look and see how that other one is going um, how it's starting to dry and then we'll come back tomorrow night I'll show you the transfer we're going to use and we're going to chalk on that one
And actually, I'll show you this one completed. Maybe I'll even put it in a frame and you can see. But you don't really have to frame it um, because the color goes right off the edges and it, you get a wrapped effect. So it's really, really cool. Really cool. All right. I think I'm going to stop torching that, although it looks like there's some really cool cells that want to come up right here. I think I'll leave it and let them pop on their own. So I'll hold this up for you and we'll see if you can see. So you can see that edge, how it wraps right down around the edge. But isn't that kind of cool? You see how all the cells kind of came up in it? The yellows popped in with the pinks and so on. Really, really kind of cool. So let me take my glasses with me over here. I'll lay this one down and then I'll take you over and show you this one over here. First, I'm going to grab a Lysol wipe and give my hands a wipe before I grab my phone. wet stuff's gone and I'll take you off and show you how we're coming along and I'll show you the transfer just unplug you there all right so right over here so there's that one Oop. that one's starting to dry but there is let me see if I can get you centered here's that one coming along you know what? Let me turn and then I can see what you see. I'm going to go to that side of the room. I lose you. Okay, I won't do that anymore. So, here is the transfer we're going to use. It's an 18 by 18 transfer. Uh, mightier than the waves of the sea is his love for you. See, and it's got little waves at the bottom. So that will be perfect for tomorrow night. So everyone, please, please, please hop back because it will be fun to finish the project with you. I will turn you back around here. There we go. It'll be fun to finish the project with you and, um, and see what it turns out like together. So tomorrow, um, that should be dry. I will use a little bit, get that light out of my way there. Um, I'll use a little bit of acrylic paint and, or sorry, I'm lying to you now. Um, Verithane, I'll seal it and, um, then we'll chalk on it tomorrow night, and we'll get a nice finished piece. We'll see how it all turns out together. Okay, thanks for joining me tonight. I'll see you tomorrow night.